ओके अस्सलाम वालेकुम आई होप सो ऑल ऑफ यू आर फाइन एंड डूइंग वेरी वेल सो एज यू ऑल गाइस नो दैट यस्टरडे वी हैव अ ग्रेट सेशन ऑन द ब्रेस्ट कैंसर अवेयरनेस एंड देयर वाज सीरीज ऑफ ग्रेट लेक्चर्स थैंक्स टू यू गाइस इट वाज नॉट पॉसिबल विदाउट यू दैट यू सपोर्टेड अस uh now being coming back to the lecture sessions uh, which on which our youtube channel uh, we cover uh, as you guys uh, many of you guys have requested us so that we can carry out oral pathology lectures so um, today there is one more topic which is very important from the exam and examination point of view as well as theoretical point of view and from the viva point of view as well uh, which is very very favorite of the examiners and and this is a very much important for you as a dentist also so today we will be discussing about the uh, cyst of the oral cavity so without uh, any delay i would like to uh, share my slides so that you guys can uh, see it i hope so this is visible to you all so now let's start uh, with the cyst of or, uh, oral cavity so cyst is basically any pathological lesion Uh, there are two type of pathological lesion uh, either it's a cyst or either it's a tumor both are uh, very very uh, harmful for the normal structures basically both are the pathological lesions so it can be either cyst or either tumor so we are discussing today uh, specifically cysts of the oral cavity we will discussing about the odontogenesis the cyst which are derived from the odonto odontom like uh, uh, which are derived from the teeth and non odontogenic which are non uh, uh, deriving from tooth like soft tissue cyst and the pseudo cyst which are false cyst basically so let's start uh, cyst of the oral cavity a fluid filled cavity lined by an epithelium is known as cyst so what is the definition of cyst i think the definition of cyst is this. asked by the examiner very much in the exam a fluid filled cavity it is a fluid filled cavity basically lined by an epithelium uh, known as uh, cyst theek hai so there is a cavity which is a fluid filled and it is lined by an epithelium so this is his definition of a cyst there are two types of cysts in oral cavity uh, this is the most important question as well how much type of the cyst you should know that there are two types of the cysts in oral cavity uh, which you can say that odontogenic and non odontogenic and uh, they are different on the basis of their source of their derivation the cyst may be developmental or inflammatory this is another important thing you should remember the cysts can be developmentally which uh, are become on the development or it can be due to the an, an inflammation or inflammatory reason okay let's continue uh, how uh, how does a cyst form the, the pathogenesis is, this is a very important uh, viva question uh, you can be asked in the exam also so what what happens first uh, uh, the, there is a proliferation of the epithelial lining Uh, uh the cells in the epithelial lining start to proliferate and then there is a hydrostatic pressure of cystic fluid the cystic fluid uh, uh, con uh, consists of uh, uh, the uh, uh, hydro hydrostatic pressure then it causes the resorption of the surrounding bone basically so in this way a cyst is formed so i hope so you guys uh, got the point okay now how can we classify the cyst of the jaw basically we can classify it into two main headings uh, and, and under the odontogenic cyst or non odontogenic cyst the then the non odontogenic cyst and odontogenic cyst are further classified as follow odontogenic cyst or the cyst which are derived from the basically tooth or uh, bone are are of two type basically like inflammatory or developmental they can be due to any inflammation or they can be due to uh, developmental uh, reasons as well as uh, the non odontogenic uh, uh, cyst which uh, which are uh, which can be further divided into the only developmental okay now now coming to the next point uh, basically cyst of jaws uh, 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 they are further classified into the following uh, according to who uh, so i hope so you guys can uh, relate it very well uh, developmental cyst they are um, further classified as odontogenic cyst uh, uh, if the developmental cyst are derived from the odontogenic cyst uh, they can be as follows uh, uh, under the heading of odontogenic cyst you can see that gingival cyst of the newborn in the newborn you can you can see a, a cyst in the gingival portion or gingival cyst basically and then there is odontogenic keratocyst okay see it is a all time famous cyst 
and it is very very important uq as well as the uh, question which is uh, uh, asked by the examiner mostly uh, so uh, do do prepare this very well very much well for the exam because uh, all the viva and all the things will be asked related to it and this is a very important for the theoretical point of view as well okay now come the teachers so what is the teachers uh, when you uh, we will be further discussing it in detail dss is also important it has an alternative name as well uh, do remember is uh, i think so follicular cyst is the other name of the teachers is but do remember it uh, i am not confirmed uh, but let's see then there is eruption cyst uh, it is also known as eruption hematoma as well Uh, because hematoma is formed in it so you can ask by sudden uh, well then there is lateral periodontal cyst uh, uh, you should also remember this as well this is a very common cyst and then there is gingival cyst of the adult and the glandular odontogenic cyst also now come to non odontogenic cyst the cysts which are not derived from the basically odontomes or or or, or dentogenic uh, region these include nasoparentine duct cysts Uh, so the name as the name indicates it will be present in basically nasal or parent parentine bone region and then there is nasal labial cyst nasal and labial cyst basically or uh, then we can say that there is inflammatory or non cyst so there are two cysts which are due to inflammation uh, which can be result of due to inflammation caused in the non region which are radicular cyst and then there is parodontal cyst parodontal cyst is also known as the Uh, you should know that uh, uh, also known as the cracks is uh, radicular cyst known as, as periodontal or uh, i i think so like uh, periapical yes so this is another name of radicular cyst so do remember it as well now cyst of the jaws uh, they can be uh, derived uh, on the basis of the uh, divided three uh, regions from which they are divided they are derived they can be derived either from the rest of molasses you should know that these are the remnants basically and then there is reduced enamel epithelium and dental lamina Uh, in the exam, uh, always the examiner asks you a question related to the cyst. Basically, they they ask you that uh, what is the origin of this cyst. So you should always uh, answer that uh, that uh, this cyst is derived from rest of molasses. This uh, this cyst is derived from the dental labia. For example, dentigious cyst is derived from the uh, reduced labia epithelium. You should you can you you should know these points as well. So you must always remember the origin of the cyst. So from where the cysts are being arising, so these three are the origins from where uh, they arise. Uh, so this is an example. This is a very important cyst uh, classification origin. Uh, the the uh, the cysts which are deriving from the rest of molasses are periapical cysts. Uh, uh, it is saying that it is present uh, uh, around the apical portion of cyst uh, or the residual cyst, the cyst which has been left in place. Then there is a reduced enamel epithelium. Uh, this is uh, which is are deriving from the reduced enamel epithelium. The digestive cyst is being uh, uh, derived from the reduced enamel epithelium. You should know that because uh, in exam uh, you are asked by the examiner. Uh, please tell uh, the origin of the digestive cyst. So you should remember the digestive cyst is, uh, is uh, derived from the reduced enamel epithelium. Okay. Uh, just taking one minute break from of azan in the meanwhile if you have any question uh, you can ask me in the uh, comment section as well so i would love to also your queries as well Eruptions is also derived from the roots in amine epithelium. Then there are two other cysts which are being derived from dental lamina, which includes OKC, which is known as odontogenic keratosis. Then there is gingival cyst of adult. Now coming to the other cysts, 
the frequency of the cyst which occurs the most as you know that the peri epidural or radicular cyst occurs the most then there is ventricular cyst uh, which occurs secondly secondly second time the most then you can see then okc comes third and nasopharyngeal occurs fourth so uh, you can also uh, have a question in exam uh, which cyst occurs the most uh, commonly you should know there is a peri epidural or radicular cyst occurs most and then comes the ventricular cyst and then okc so what is peri epidural cyst so basically when comes the peri as the name indicates peri epidural cyst is also known as the radicular cyst it is present on the apex portion of the tooth and it is around the big apex so it is known as peri epidural cyst and in flame epithelium of the peri epidural areas tooth gives rise to peri epidural cyst so in flame epithelium will give rise to the peri epidural areas of tooth gives rise to the peri epidural cyst uh, it is also known as radicular cyst do you should know the alternative name as well because because uh, uh, in the exam uh, a question can come uh, regarding the uh, radicular cyst and you should know that uh, its other name is peri epidural cyst so never confuse the it uh, with another cyst you should always remember that it is a peri epidural cyst now moving forward it is a two epithelium lined cyst containing the fluid and cellular debris basically it is a two cyst you will uh, see uh, come across the cysts which are not two cyst and they are basically not lined uh, and by the epithelium that's why they are not two cyst but it is a two epithelium lined cyst and it, contain, it contains fluid as well as the cellular debris then it arises from the rest of molasses so this is one of the important thing you should remember that it arises from the rest of uh, molasses uh, then it is it, if it appear along the lateral aspect of the root it is known as lateral radicular cyst okay this is also a very interesting thing that if it appears along the lateral aspect of the root it is known as lateral radicular cyst okay now what are the clinical features of peri epidural cyst uh, when uh, seeing clinically you should uh, see that uh, it can uh, present with following clinical feature it is symptomless basically your patient will have no symptoms until acutely inflamed uh, if it is, it is uh, in the acute form and it is a, a inflammation you uh, see in acute form then you can see like symptoms of pain and other thing then you can see like swelling will occur on in that region and there will be a mild uh, sensitivity in that region to mobility of the adjacent teeth if the cyst is enlarged basically if the cyst is enlarged it will um, cause mobility of the adjacent teeth as well okay you can see like uh, that in this picture uh, the star is occurring on the picture uh, tooth in this tooth you can see that uh, Uh, there is a, a cyst present in the radicular portion uh, of uh, apex uh, in the apex periapical portion which is being enlarged and uh, in uh, like you can see like the, if the, there is a teeth uh, addition to it it will be then mobile and there is swelling and redness as well okay then uh, coming to the radiographic features when we see it in the red under the radiograph you see that uh, the, the 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 features are similar to periapical granuloma You can see that this cyst is formed and it disappears like this, this under the root around the periapical region. Okay, around the apex region. Loss of lamina dura. You can see that uh, uh, in this picture there is a loss of lamina dura along with a well demarcated radial sensi. So you will uh, see that there is a loss of lamina dura also and a well demarcated uh, radial sensi as well. you can see that this uh, there is a loss in this uh, uh, lamina dura ar around the apex as well as the well demarcated uh, radial sensi uh, radial sensi always uh, you can see in black color and circles the apex of the affected tooth and this is encircling basically the apex of the affected tooth uh, so uh, the root is uh, uh, also resorbed uh, you can see that in this picture root is also being absorbed resorbed as well then uh, the thing which are very important and the question comes in your exam as well as in your practical uh, you are being asked uh, like uh, what are the histopathological features you should remember that uh, these are all uh, these are lined by stratified squamous epithelium uh, this is a one million or one dollar question that you should always remember that all the cysts of the oral cavity will be basically lined by the stratified squamous epithelium because the uh, uh, oral uh, oral epithelium is basically lined by the stratified squamous epithelium so this is one of the important thing you should know that 
and which may be hyperplastic and may show uh, mucous metaplasia which may either be showing the signs of metaplasia or hyperplastic as well the wall of lumen is made up of a dense fibrous connective tissue the lumen wall will, will be made of a dense fibrous connective tissue uh, inflamed with chronic inflammatory sugar through normally lymphocyte plasma cell and giant cells so uh, it will also contain the chronic inflammatory uh, cells uh, which are lymphocyte plasma cell and giant cells do remember these as well then what are the contents of radicular acid you will see these contents in the radicular acid basically you will find hyaline bodies western bodies uh, this is one of the important things as well you can see that uh, an example is asked question in the ask regarding uh, uh, western bodies are found in which of the following cells so you should remember that radicular acid and as well as crostal clefts are also seen in the radicular cells this is a uh, histopathological picture of periapical cyst you can uh, see uh, the uh, S35 squamous epithelium as well as the dense fibrous connective tissue and the lumen as well as the inflammatory exudate as well. Okay, this is showing that radicular cells displaying abundant cholesterol glass, uh, clefts. The cholesterol clefts are being seen uh, crystals in the connective wall tissue wall as well. So, uh, hyaline bodies uh, can be seen in the cyst wall basically, and this, these are small circumscribed pool of isnofilling material with a corrugated periphery of the condensed collagen. The isnofilling material may contain inflammatory exudate like plasma cell, lymphocyte, and necrotic debris. So, the isnofilling material uh, will contain basically inflammatory exudate, as I told you earlier, plasma cells, lymphocytes, and necrotic debris. Then there are small circumscribed pools of eosinophilic material uh, with a corrugated periphery of condensed collagen. Then there are rustin bodies. You can see that uh, rustin bodies will be either present in the linear or arch shaped calcification basically. Then what is the treatment of peripheral cyst? You either can enucleate it or then you can marsopulize that cyst. So these are the two treatment options available for it. Then there is another cyst, uh, as I told you earlier, it's another name is follicular cyst. I was uh, right. Uh, you should remember that the candidious cyst is also known as follicular cyst. It can come in exam under the heading of follicular cyst as well. So you, you should also remember it uh, as the name as well. Then it originates from the separation of follicle from around the crown of an uninterrupted tooth. So uh, the cyst encloses the crown of the uninterrupted tooth and it is attached to the uh, tooth at the cemento double junction. Basically, this is asked in the exam as well. Uh, it, it, you, you will always see clinically and radiographically uh, uh, this cyst being attached with the cemento enamel junction CEJ and it will most commonly uh, be associated with the crown of uninterrupted tooth and so this will be the cyst in the present in the uh, patient uh, who, uh, whose crown has not been uh, erupted in the oral cavity yet uh, so this comes in a scenario and you should always remember that the cyst can be an option as well it develops by the accumulation of fluid between the reduced enamel epithelium to crown. So this is one of the OSCE station uh, highlighting point. You should remember, uh, and if this uh, uh, if this comes in the theoretical scenario as well, you should be you should know that uh, this this thing only occurs uh, in the interior shape that it can be developed by the accumulation of fluid between the reduced enamel epithelium as well as the to crown. Okay. The, when what are the then lingual features of the gestures? Then candidiasis cysts have the following clinical features. It occurs in the age of 10 to 30 years of age. Uh, then the sites which are more commonly involved are mandibular molar area. It will more common in the molar area in the mandible around the crown of the impacted tooth, uh, as I told you earlier. Then may surround or don't tomb, then supernumerary tooth as well. So it is symptomatic when become infected. So it doesn't, it is not symptomatic when it is not infected, but when it is infected, it will become symptomatic. The patient will uh, uh, have some symptoms. Uh, it may cause facial deformity if extensive laying. Uh, so it can also cause facial deformity if it is a very a huge or extensive laying. Maxillary anterior and maxillary canine are also affected. Uh, uh, can be also affected in, in then displacement of affected teeth and root resorption. So the teeth in which it will be present, then uh, they will be uh, displaced basically and there will be root resorption in it. So you can see in this picture, clinical picture, that uh, it is uh, uh, present basically around the uh, tooth of uh, unerupted, crown of unerupted tooth, uh, uh, which is not being erupted in royal cavity yet. And uh, you can see this picture, this is more clinical uh, descriptive uh, picture of this tooth. Then what are uh, what are the radiographic features of the DGSS? Then DGSS has following radiographic features. It is, it is either well demarcated, uh, you can see that uh, 
uh, it, it is very very much well demarcated you can see that radio lucency as well uh, around the uh, crown of the uninterrupted tooth so this picture can come in your oski session and ospi session as well and you should remember that if the uh, crown of uninterrupted tooth is covered by the this radio this type of radio lucency this is always occur in the digestion so you should also uh, you, should, you come to diagnosis very fast uh, after seeing this picture uh, then digestion uh, then there are histopathological features uh, you should you can see like fibrous connective tissue wall uh, which will uh, we lose the range then two to four cell uh, uh, thick epithelial lining composed of keratinized epithelial cells. This is also MCQ. Uh, how much thick epithelial lining composed of keratinized epithelial cells? Two to four cells. And then there is mucous cells in the lining as well. So then what's the treatment of it? And he says, enucleation with the removal of unerupted tooth reoccurrence is uh, uncommon. Basically, reoccurrence is very, very uncommon. Uh, the enucleation can uh, uh, be treat, uh, with the help of the inhibition you can treat uh, with the removal of uninterrupted tooth basically. Now uh, comes the most famous uh, or says uh, basically or says it is known as OKC uh, or this is a very very uh, favorite uh, question and uh, topic uh, from the exam point of view as well uh, for, uh, for the viva for the examiner so you should know about it very much. Uh, it arises from dental amina so you should remember its origin as well. It is most common in the 10 to 40 years of age. Uh, then what is the most common occurring site? It is most common in the mandible, basically posterior body and ascending ramus. You can see it in the posterior body and ascending ramus. Then the uh, largest are painful and swelling. When these are large, uh, they are painful and they are uh, they will show the signs of swelling uh, swollen as well. But are radiological features of course. Uh, they are well defined reducent area. So you can see that they are very defined area, smooth and corticated margins. A large is may appear multilocular. So they can be multilocular as well if they are large. Then these are the OKC. You can see uh, very, very well uh, in this uh, OPG orthopend tomogram. What are the histo uh, so it's histopathology uh, pathology is very much important and it is one of the issues as well. So you should uh, always prepare this. Uh, 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 this is very uh, uh, good for the exam point of view because you can ask uh, to write about histopathy in exam as well as in the practical or uh, examiner can ask you for the viva as well. So uh, what in the, what do you see as in the histopathological feature? Uh, fibrous connective tissue wall and uh, then there is lumen line by the keratinized 35 plumbus epithelium uh, composed of 6 to 8 cell thickness. You should remember this thickness, 6 to 8 cell thickness. Then there is a basal epithelial layer is composed of the palisaded layer of the cuboidal or columnar epithelial cells with hyperchrome uh, which are hyperchromatic so you should remember this as well uh, then this comes a very important point picket fence appearance of basal cells so uh, you can ask me in the exam that uh, which cyst has picket uh, fence appearance of the basal cells you should always remember that okc this is one of the diagnostic points uh, by, uh, by uh, letting know this you can uh, easily highlight in exam as well then there are keratin may be lost in the same keratin keratosis kerat 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 and mimic keratin cells. So it can also be a disease if the keratin is lost. So this is a topological uh, picture. And then what are the treatment options you we have in equation curatage and mass utilization as well? So whenever uh, you uh, you study the OKC, then there is another thing uh, which comes in uh, association with it, and it is a very very important syndrome. Uh, you should remember uh, it's another name as well. Uh, you should remember that it is it's known as Gorlin and Gorge syndrome, and its other name is the void basal cell carcinoma syndrome. So these can uh, come to with alternative names: the void basal cell carcinoma syndrome as well as the Gorlin Gorge syndrome. It is basically an autosomal dominant. Uh, 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 and then it but are the major features which is associated with this comes under the heading of it and there is a table in the contemporary as well so you should uh, prepare this very much well because it's also a u2 uh, and you should you can be asked about the major features uh, what are the major features the major features includes okc or ontogenic keratosis as well as the multiple basal cell carcinomas as well as the intracranial calcification uh, the, uh, uh, then there are skeletal anomalies uh, then there are cysts of skins, then there are palmer and plantar pits. Okay, then you can see like there will be frontal browsing, then there will be retinal calcification as well, then there will be hyper as well. Okay, so these are some of the clinical 
signs, symptoms uh, which will be associated in the features with the nasal nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome, uh, which is also known as the Corlin Gord syndrome. These are the intracranial calcification, as I told you, and hypertelorism and retinal detachment, basically. Then uh, comes the very, very interesting test, uh, which I very much love. It's known as magnifying or CEOC. Uh, it is a rare well circumcribed, basically it is rare and it is well circumcribed a solid or cystic ligand. So, so it can be either a tumor or as well as a cystic ligand uh, derived from the oral nephrium. Okay, it resembles an amyloblastoma microscopically with additional or addition of ghost cells and spherical calcification. So you should never get it confused with the, uh, the amyloblastoma. Basically it resembles the amyloblastoma but it has two additional properties like it will have ghost cells and spherical calcification as well not considered to be a separate state. it is not considered to be separate rather than it is a place in tumor along the tomes basically it is also can also place in tumor along the tomes what are the clinical features it can occur in any tooth sparing area so this is very important most commonly in the tooth anterior to molars so it is present most commonly in a teeth anterior to molars usually seen in second decade of life it is basically seen in the age of 20 plus or 20 way represent as focal swelling present outside the bone so it can be present as focal swelling uh, when placed outside the bone. Into this is the causes bone expansion of the cortical and lingual plates. So whenever it will occur in the bone, it will cause the bone expansion of cortical and lingual plates, and it is basically asymptomatic. Now, now coming to the histopathology, it can be cystic or uh, solid. Uh, the epithelial lining is similar to the amyloblastoma. Basically, the upper layer of the amyloblastoma component shows the presence of large eosinophilic non nucleic Cell known as ghost cells. So you should always remember uh, the ghost cells are basically large eosinophilic and non-nucleated cells. Uh, Examiners basically ask, and it can tell them in an MCU like calcified or non shows up a picture of a ghost cell. Uh, what are ghost cells? You should know that these are large eosinophilic non-nucleated cells. Then there are multiple spherical calcification are seen either within the epithelium or in the adjacent tissue. So uh, multiple spherical calcification can be seen either within the epithelium or in the adjacent tissue. So calcifying or non you can see this picture very sophistical. And then there are radiographic features. What are radiographic features? Well circumscribed unilocular radiography is containing flex of calcified material seen as radiopestes. May resemble an orontoma. So uh, it, it, these are well circumscribed basically and they are unilocular radiosensies and containing flex of calcified material seen as radiopestes may resemble an, an, an orontoma. Okay, now what is the treatment? Treatment is either conservative, uh, you can either simply excise it or then there is a block resection as well. So coming to the next point, there is a glandular or odonogenesis. It is derived from the rest of dental lamina and then may also be known as cialo odontogenesis. And then there, it, it shares a few features with the periodontal cyst. Uh, it has a propensity to reoccur. It can occur basically reoccur. The endodontist has some of the histopathy. Uh, uh, they, it has a thin exquamous epithelial lining, which may be of varying thickness. Few areas show focal epithelial thickening, also known as flak or radius, which is known as a small granular structure or microcyst within the lining epithelium. And single layer of columnar or pyroidal cell lining the granular structure within the cyst lining. You should remember that, uh, it. And uh, if you learn it technically, uh, you can remember it easily. Basically, you should remember these origin and what type of cells can be present in them. As the name indicates, it's a granular cell, so it will contain basically go wider columnar cells as well as the um, uh, microcyst and dendro structures as well. And odontogenic, so it will have focal epithelial lining as well. Okay, what are these radiographic features? It is seen basically in mandible. Unilocular can be uh, uh, unilocular single. Uh, uh, or multilocular radiosensitivities, they are well defined. What is the treatment? They are surgically enucleated, followed by the curatage, and recurrence is common. Okay. Now, now coming to the eruption cyst. Eruption cyst is also known as eruption hematoma. You should also remember that typical clinical feature of an eruption cyst bluish colored dome shaped swelling on the unerupted molar. So it will show the bluish colored dome. And shear swelling uh, on the molar which is unerupted. The cyst is nothing but a cyst occurring in the soft tissue instead of bone. 
okay this is one important one this is nothing but our dentigus is occurring in soft tissue instead of bone so it is occurring uh, in this cyst uh, which is occurring on soft tissue you can see like this this is a blue color shaped dome swelling present on the cyst present on the soft tissue not on bone so this is basically uh, i told you eruption cyst or eruption trauma this is a dentigus cyst basically then there is a, a gingival cyst of adult uncommon cyst of the gingival soft tissue very 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 uncommon Occurs free or, or, or on the tag in Java. It can occur on free or as well as the tag in Java. Believed to be soft tissue counter part of the lateral periodontal cyst. So do do remember this line as well, because uh, in this line you uh, you can come. Uh, what is a soft tissue counter part of the lateral uh, periodontal uh, cyst? You know that in Java cyst soft tissue is the believed to be soft tissue counter part of the lateral periodontal. Cyst. Now, what is the pathology to arise from the rest of the dental lamina? It can be also asked. Then, the clinical feature uh, age incidence is uh, the fifth to sixth decade of life. Incidence is three three direction. Uh, side predilection is three molar can uh, root canine region. So, signs and symptoms slowly in enlarging. It is basically slowly enlarging. It enlarges slowly and is well circumscribed uh, and it is painless swelling. These are the three points. It is invariably occurs as a facial aspect of the free or attached jaw. Then surface of lion is smooth of normal color. Fluctuant lion adjacent to the teeth are vital. Surface of lion is smooth of the normal color and fluctuant lion adjacent to the teeth are vital. Okay. So what are the differential diagnoses? Gingival swelling epulas must be considered uh, in the differential diagnosis as well. Uh, these are the some of the differential diagnoses you should remember. Uh, the peripheral cancer is a noma, pyogenic cancer is a noma, peripheral or spine fibroma, irritational fibroma. And these will have for these physiological features uh, that they are similar to the lateral periodontal cysts. Some cysts are lined by stratified squamous epithelium. Sometimes focal thickening may be found within the epithelium. Treatment is best treated by it is best treated by the local surgical excision basically. Then lateral periodontal cysts, uh, you can see like they are uncommon but well recognized type of odontal cysts. Uh, designation of LPC uh, uh, lateral periodontal cysts is restricted to only those cysts which occur in a periodontal region. On the lateral aspect of teeth, so this will only occur in lateral aspect of teeth, and uh, in which implementary etiology and diagnosis of collateral OCC is ruled out of clinically and histologically. So uh, it occurs mostly in the 60 to 70 years of age. Uh, it occurs more commonly in the males, uh, and then the sites uh, which occur uh, it is more are uh, lateral periodontal regions of the mandible, the premolar area for the anterior maxilla. So this can come in your MCU as well. That period regions of mandible, premolar area. They are the more common side as well. Spine symptoms is usually is asymptomatic. It occurs on the lateral aspects of the root of surface, basically, occasionally pain and swelling may occur. Occasionally, it can come present with the pain and swelling. Associated teeth are vital, basically, the teeth which are being associated are vital unless otherwise affected. Uh, cyst really is less than 1 cm in size, except for portoid variety. Oh, okay, I also uh, told the portoid variety can uh, come in the under hiding of the great cyst. Uh, which is large and multi local region. Okay. The radiological features are uh, round to avoid radio senses that will be present with still rotting margin. Cysts may be present anywhere between the cervical margin or apex. Basically, uh, you can see between the cervical margin to apex. Radiologically, it can be confused with fall at OKC as well. So, radiologically, you can confuse it with the OKC, don't confuse it like that. Okay. Then, what's the differential diagnosis? In the differential diagnosis, you can see that. Uh, Column median must be considered differential diagnosis. So, lateral OKC, lateral radicular cyst, if associated tooth is non vital. So, if the tooth is associated with non vital, you can you will uh, relate it with lateral radicular cyst. Pathogenesis, it is similar to the general cyst of a drug. The cyst too arises from the dental and amina. What are the logical features? It is most commonly lying in a non thin, non characterizing epithelium. If the lining is appears keratinized, then also call it OKC. This is one of the two differences you can see between the OKC as well as the uh, this uh, uh, cyst, uh, uh, lateral periodontal cyst. Uh, it is non uh, keratinizing, and the other was the uh, other one OKC was keratinizing. Many thick regions of the lining may show focal epithelial thickening, plaques as well. Some epithelial nest may seen in the uh, CD wall, which show the uh, sign of mid inflammation. 
So treatment, what is treatment? Small cyst are treated by surgical enucleation, and the larger, especially botryoid variety, must be followed after enucleation to watch for the recurrence, because they can occur, uh, uh, reoccur as well. So here ends our uh, today's slide and our today's uh, topic of the uh, cyst of the oral cavity. Uh, it it has it it didn't cover the uh, pseudo cyst, which are the false cysts basically. Um, but you should remember uh, two things basically uh, that these cysts don't have uh, uh, epithelial lining as present in the two cysts which are covered by the uh, epithelial lining. And uh, if there are uh, some of the names, uh, it uh, inshallah I will try to cover this in, the, in any uh, other upcoming lecture on the oral cavity cyst. But for now, uh, um, now you should remember there are some cysts which are known as pseudo cysts. So uh, that are uh, there are two types: either two cysts and false cysts. So false cysts are also known as pseudo cysts, and these cysts don't have epithelium lining. So hope so. This lecture was uh, uh, useful for you guys, and uh, you came to know about the cyst of oral cavity. Thanks a lot for listening, and do subscribe my YouTube channel, and do let me know in comment section if you uh, love this lecture or you want me another lecture to cover uh, or any topic on oral pathology or of any subjects. Thanks a lot. Good afternoon.